Amen. Amen. Um, I want to speak today about the Holy Spirit in trials and temptations. Corrie ten Boom, who died in 1983, um, one year after my first son was born. Um, Corrie was a Dutch Christian who helped Jewish people. You might have actually, many of you have heard of her, but if you go onto YouTube, you can actually see some of her interviews and she's... Um, got an incredible story to tell and it's so encouraging to hear her story. Um, Corrie Ten Boon helped Jewish people escape Nazi Germany during the war and who was herself imprisoned at the age of 52 and she had a sister in with her and, um, and her sister died not long before she was released. But you know Talking about trials and temptations, we often have questions and um, Corrie had the same question as a girl whether she would be able to suffer without betraying her Lord Jesus. She told her father and the story goes like this, Daddy, she said one day, I'm afraid that I will never be strong enough to be a martyr for Jesus Christ. Tell me, her father wisely responded, when you take, take a train trip from home to Amsterdam, when do I give you the money for the ticket? Three weeks before? Is that what I do? No, Daddy, you give me the money for the ticket just before we get on the train. That is right, he replied, and so it is with God's strength. Our wise father in heaven knows when you are going to need things too. Today you do not know, need the strength of a martyr. But as soon as you are called upon for the honour of faith, facing death for Jesus, he will supply the strength you need just in time. I took great comfort in my father's advice, Corrie told the audience. Later, I had to suffer for Jesus in a Nazi concentration camp. And I suffered, but I didn't die. I survived. But he gave, indeed did give me courage and the power that I needed. You know, um, Corrie Ten Boone's um, testimony illustrates our opening scripture very well. Your story might and will most probably be different. You may have lost a loved one. You may have been terribly abused or being abused. Or there are so many different things and trials and temptations we can have. But it is the same presence and power of the person of the Holy Spirit who can bring you through even your greatest trial and bring to you wisdom, guidance and his presence to take you and me through. Corrie's testimony illustrates this and our opening scripture very well. 1 Peter 4, 12 to 14. Beloved, do not think it strange. How often do we think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you? As soon as we have a trial or as soon as there are, there are problems, we think it's strange. We think it's unnatural. We think because we walk with God or that we don't, you know, even if you don't walk with God, but we always think it's strange. And, um, but Peter is saying, beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. And I think that's one of the first things that we need to see in life, that there will be trials and temptations for us to face and not to run from them or start condemning ourselves or condemning others. There is, there is these trials and temptations. 
and as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And at this stage when I read that, you need to really stay with me because I know I go, how does that actually <laughs> work? You know, how does that, yeah, that doesn't sound quite right, like it should go together. But the word says, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So point one, he is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. John 14, 17 says, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him for he remains with you continually and will be in you. Jesus says, in John 15, 26, but when the helper comes, when I shall send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father and he will testify and bear witness about me. Again, John 16, 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, full and complete truth. You know, sometimes we can get caught up and even get angry with God because we have half truths. We don't have the full truth. And it's so important for us to walk gently with the Spirit of God so that he can give us a full picture, the full truth, which sets us free and changes relations, brings peace and brings the life of the Spirit. For he will not, the Holy Spirit, speak of his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father the message regarding the Son, and will disclose or tell you what is to come in the future. Point one, the spirit of truth will bring to your mind whatever truth you need, little or much. You know, at the time, we always want to know. We want to be in control. We want to know things always ahead. But, the, you know, like if you think of Corrie in that she doesn't know what's happening from time, you know, from hour by hour less than that in those th th those camps and you know the trials and things that we go there are things in life we cannot control but this, we must rest in the spirit of God for the God has not left us helpless he has given us this wonderful mighty powerful Holy Spirit the person of the Holy Spirit to guide us to lead us to bring truth to us us just when we need it. The Holy Spirit in trials and temptations is all important to the Christian. We all have trials and temptations in life. And at some point in your and my life, all the forces of darkness will seek to confuse and obscure the light of truth. If you live long enough, the, the enemy, the forces of darkness will for a time for God always comes through, but for of time, he will seek to confuse and obscure the light of truth in that period of time. All the hosts of dark power in this world will appear to make God look distant to you in your trial. We'll try and make God look small, ineffective, like nothing. That is the goal of Satan and sin, to make God look useless and worthless and unable to conquer or seem unjust. How many times you say, oh, God is so unjust or disinterested in your life? The forces of darkness, but Christ always comes through. The work of the Holy Spirit in that hour, the work of the Spirit of Truth, is to come and rest upon you with whatever measure of truth you will need to be faithful. You can count on that. The word of God says, the spirit of truth will bring to your mind whatever truth you need, little or much to sustain you in that hour. The Holy Spirit is wonderful. Point two, Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will glorify me. You know, we hear so much around now when the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, there'll be just laughter, there'll be this. 
all those things are all very good. I'm not putting them out, but I'm just saying the word of God says when the spirit of truth comes, he will glorify Jesus. John 16, 13 to 14. Verse 14 says, Jesus said, he will glorify, that's the Holy Spirit, and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and disclose it to you. So in your hour of need and in your hour of trial, if we listen and, and allow the Holy Spirit just to rest on us and listen for his voice, he will take the things of heaven and make them known to us that we will have the truth that we need, that you will have the truth that you need. The height and the depth and the width, the whole purpose of all the truth, the revelations, the understandings, and they are ongoing. God is always giving. The Spirit of God is always bringing understanding for whosoever will listen and who, whosoever has ears to hear. And the Holy Spirit brings to us the glory of Jesus Christ. He will show us the greatness of Jesus, the excellency of Jesus, the beauties of Jesus. The essence of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to magnify the beauty of Christ in the human heart and mind. Your and my heart. Therefore, in the hour of your trial, he will not let you forget Jesus. And you will think sometimes, I need this and I need that and I need, I know, I'm more. And he says, start revealing Jesus to you. To give you perspective, to do a work and to release his answer. Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus says unto them, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That means help the people to learn. Go and help the people to learn of me. That I'm not far away. That I've given my Holy Spirit. That I've given everything they need for life and for health and for strength. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you always, regardless of the circumstances. I am with you, Tox, when you're running around after those children. I am with you, says the Holy Spirit. I am with you. I want to give you more wisdom. I want to give you more understanding. I want to pour out blessing. I want to give you more strength. I am with you. I never leave you. When all those kids are yelling and demanding and you think, oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. He says, yes, I'm here to help you, Tox. He says he will never leave us regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, he will be there always, even to the end of the age. Always. Don't you love that word? Always. He is with you always, Christian, including the final hour of testing. And the work of the Holy Spirit is to cause us to remember him and to see with the eyes of our heart, of, our, of faith. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus in you and through you as you and I are led by the instructions of the Holy Spirit and his presence. The truth is his presence rests on you whether you feel it or not, Christian. Seeing with the eyes of your heart faith what is not always discernible with the natural eye or feelings. Sometimes we have the feeling and we know God is there. Sometimes we don't. But he has promised to be always there, never to leave his side. Point three, as he rests upon you, the spirit will sustain your love for Christ. Now, sometimes you think, Isn't, I think that's powerful. As the spirit of God rests upon me, as he rests upon you, the spirit will sustain your love for Christ. It's not even something you and I have to do ourselves. The Holy Spirit rests upon you, Christian. The Holy Spirit does not merely reveal the truth about Jesus. He rests upon you. And he 
also the beauty and the power and the wisdom and the love of Christ is because he's resting on you, there is a transaction that takes place. The Holy Spirit commutes, communicates to our hearts the preciousness of Jesus. He makes us feel Jesus is enough for us in this hour and that he is better than all other loves we have already known. You know, we need to tune into the Holy Spirit because have you ever been in love and, or, and th- you know, and things happen, life's happened and trials, sometimes you think you'll never, ever be, never be able to, re, you know, recuperate, never be at a place again to, to live well. But um, he wants us to know that he is greater than all other loves. He wants to reveal, and the Spirit of God reveals that to our hearts. It's not something we can know just in our head. As we are aware of the presence, live aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit is with you. In Philippians 3.3, 3, Paul says, For we who are born again have been reborn from above. Why have we been reborn above? Because we have the Spirit of God within us and he rests on us. Therefore, spiritually transformed, we are renewed and being renewed set apart for his purpose. It's even being set apart each day as we go on with him. Those that worship in the spirit of God and the glory of God rests on us. Paul is saying Christians, we are to worship by the spirit of God. In other words, it is the Holy Spirit We worship God when we acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is with us and on us and resting on us. And then everything we do, whether it's singing or whatever it is, or our workplace, looking after our children, the things just, and the mundane things of life, we are worshipping God. Because worship is of the Spirit of God. In other words, it is the Holy Spirit that gives to our hearts a sense of the worth of Christ and then the sense of our worth. It is a person, the Holy Spirit, who causes us to feel that this momentary affliction or problem that is facing us is nothing compared to all that is in Christ, in Jesus for you, now and in the future and eternally. But I want to make a little comment here that he's not saying your trial is nothing. Your trial is great that you're going through, been through or going to be going through. But he is saying if you could just get a glimpse of the fact that in him it is nothing compared to the glory, the beauty of him, and he says, I am yours and you are mine. I am beyond this world, says the Lord. The, it's be, he's beyond this world and, and any other being of this world or anything that might be thrown at you. Point four, he is resting on you as a spirit of glory. In your trials and temptations, when I'm in my trials and in temptations, in the temptation to react, remember, recall, 1 Peter 4.14 says, if you are insulted and reviled, for bearing the name of Jesus, you are blessed. You are happy with life joy. That comes from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Life joy. Because with doing life, you're doing life with him. So there is a, a joy in the midst. And comforting God's salvation regardless, regardless of your circumstances. Because the Spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and dwelling in you. Someone may curse you, curse him, and, and, um, but you are glorifying God. Peter says here, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you, Christian, which means two things. He causes us to feel that the glory we are losing, this is really important, because in the midst of a trial, you, you're usually losing something in this world that's very important to you. It, it can be your, um, how good you've appeared amongst people. or um, it, But there's a loss of, 
of some kind. It can be a loss of face. Um, but it causes us to feel that the glory we are losing here in the trial is not worth keeping. God acknowledges that there is a glory that belongs to this world. That is true, isn't it? We're fighting for it most of the time. Secondly, and more importantly, the glory we are about to gain is so much more greater and in infinitely better than what we're losing. If you have lost something or things in this life, God is saying to you, the glory of his presence will rest on you. And even though there has been great loss to you, he will give unto you an infinitely greater gain, far outweighing what you have lost. And not only that, it will be an eternal glory. In the hour of trial, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory, will cause us to feel that all the glory we are losing here is not worth keeping. That is really important to remember. It make a trial difference. Because, you know, there's a, it comes to you, the enemy comes to you and says, you know what, you could have been famous if you did this, this and this. You could have been this, this and this. You could have had millions, squillions. You know, that's, like, there is a glory and there's a very real the, of this world the glory, these are the glorious things of this world, chasing after beauty. But even me, standing here, I'm 60. I, the beauty, I look at picture like, oh, Lord, we're not 16. Just living in this world, you will lose things. But why not so much? Why not all the more when we embrace a trial, say, you know, I'll count whatever it is I'm losing as as nothing compared to the glory which is eternal that I'm getting from God and of the Spirit. The Spirit of glory will cause us to experience the reality of 1 Peter 5, 10 to 11, which says, After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you to... To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. As a spirit of glory rests upon you, he will give you a taste of that eternal glory now in this life. He will communicate to your heart the truth. If you are torn, you will be restored to perfect wholeness. If you are crushed, you will stand in triumph. If you die in utter weakness, you will live in unshakable strength. You have been called to eternal glory in Christ and the work of the spirit of glory is to seal this hope to your heart. Point five, in that hour of trial, the Holy Spirit will overcome your doubts and give you the assurance that you need. It's good for us to, to prepare even before we have any more trials. Because when we are prepared, the Spirit of God can bring to our mind and speak to us and stir us up. And it's not, it's, it's easy to listen to the Spirit of God when it's been spoken before. Because sometimes we hear it and we go, that's not God. That means I have to die to something or let go of something. That can't be God. But when we've heard his word and the Spirit of God has given us revelation, it strengthens us. It puts desire in our heart. It changes our heart. It molds our heart to receive in the time of trial. So our heart is ready and prepared to receive. The Holy Spirit will overcome your doubts and give you the assurance that you need. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. You know, so much we go, oh, no, I'm going to lose this and this. But in this, it's not saying just, you know, change your thinking. Instead, it says, cry to God. Talk to God as a father. He's a good, good God beyond any natural father that we cry unto him, pour our hearts unto him, that the spirit of God may come. And rest in greater and greater power. And bring comfort, understanding, wisdom, and all that we need for that time. 
The Spirit will even bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God and encourage our hearts. And because if we're children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and all that he has and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. Romans 8, 15. The Spirit of glory rests upon you in the midst of the loss of all earthly glory and testifies to your heart. You are an heir of infinite glory. You belong to Christ. You'll be glorified with him. You may be sure of this. Point six. When the opportunities arise, speak for Christ. Jesus said, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say. You know, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Mark 13, 11. The spirit of glory and of God will rest upon you. If in his power he wants you speechless, you need say nothing. If he wants you to speak, he will give you the words. You can count on it. You can trust him. How We get so anxious, don't we, when things happen. We get so anxious, you're trying to work it all out in our head. And forget that the Spirit of God is resting on us and has something to say. It's a time to quieten ourselves down and say, what are you saying? Be quiet, my soul. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Point seven. Finally, in our hour of trial, as the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you, he will give you himself. And in himself... There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a living experience. In the hour of trial, as we are open to the Holy Spirit, he will come he, and make himself known without any pressure in our hour of pain. Even there is... Sometimes no other opportunity to know him at that level. When I've been in my deepest, darkest hour of pain and somebody has come, I never forget. I can still remember the words of two men who encouraged me when I was 15, 16. Two men out of all the people, they just said, that encouraged me. And it took some of the pain away. But God wants to do that. God was teaching me that's what he wants to do, me to do. He, he wants to do that for me. He wants to fellowship with me in that way. He wants to restore me. He wants to restore you. You can't restore you. Coming to church... We come into the presence and have the opportunity. We open our hearts and our ears. But it's the Holy Spirit that does the transforming work in our hearts and our lives. So seek him earnestly. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no new birth. No confession of the Lordship of Christ, no victory over sin, no progress in sanctification or walking into greater holiness under God. That's the Holy Spirit that does it out of a relationship with the Holy Spirit. No spiritual wisdom. There's earthly wisdom, but all spiritual wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. No spiritual gifts and no resurrection from the dead. Why would we not seek such a person, the fullness of an experience of this person? He is a person, not a mere force. We know this from John fourteen sixteen, when Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he's already done this, and I'll give you another helper, intercessor, advocate, to be with you forever. I am your first helper, Jesus says, and the Father will send you another helper, just as you've known me when he was in person, the disciples knew him. 
as your personal helper, you, you will know him. We have the opportunity as the disciples in Jesus, when Jesus walked on this earth, we can know the person of the Holy Spirit. And he is no mere human person, for he is also God. In conclusion, we owe everything to the Spirit's power. God has said yet more of himself he will give to those who seek him. Ask him and keep asking until he comes. I encourage you. I encourage you. Every day to beware of the person of the Holy Spirit. That you love his presence. That you invite. You know, when I invite, Callum had his 16th little party at our house yesterday. I cleaned the house. I got things prepared. His parents came and did things and, and got the food and all that sort of thing. We prepared. And the fellowship, and it was amazing. And that's just human. How much more do we need to make room and prepare for the Holy Spirit who gives unto us all things pertaining to life?